Welcome everyone, I'm Miss Tammy and I am so excited that we're starting our new series called Challenge Accepted. It's got a sports theme, but it's really about the challenges in life and how Jesus helps us through them all. Yes, boys and girls, we are so excited that you're all here and we're especially excited if you're new around here. Welcome. So we've got a fun surprise for you. Every single week we send out mail to all of our friends. It's the best thing ever. We send prizes, we send letters, color sheets. You're gonna love it. And if you wanna be a part of it, all you gotta do is text in your name and the word new to the number on the screen and we'll start sending you mail. It's so awesome, boys and girls, and we're ready to get started. So if you are too, we'll go right to our video. Welcome back to Kids Crossing, where we're still learning about challenges, our Challenge Accepted series. And we're so glad you're all here today with us, where we're learning about challenges in life, challenges that we may have, challenges that people back in the Bible time faced, and how Jesus helped them and can help us now. Our big idea is that Jesus is always in control. Well, I'm hoping that I can trust that statement because right now I'm getting ready for a big bike race and that's a huge challenge for me. A bike race is something I haven't done. I've done a lot of biking, but this race really has me nervous. And so how about we get together, we're gonna pray and then we're gonna sing a song. That always makes me feel better. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that no matter what challenges we have, you are big and strong and you know the beginning from the end, and we can trust you. We can trust you with our lives, and we can trust you with our challenges. Thank you for all the kids watching today and, and all the kids that are here, Lord. We love them, we love you, and we pray that we would know more about how much you love us today. In your name we pray, Jesus, amen. All right, boys and girls, let's get up, everybody up, and let's sing a song together. Yeah, I got his power. So don't hold back. 
everybody clap your hands. Now stop. Welcome back, everybody. Great job singing. I love singing songs to God, and I love to sing about His power, and I love to sing about His love. I just love singing. So thanks for doing that with me. Right now, I want to get right into our Bible story for today. And the reason that, that is, is because it helps calm me down. When I can realize that God is so big and He gave us this beautiful book called the Bible, and there's all these truths in here, sometimes when I'm really feeling challenged, that's the best thing I can do is go to God's Word and read it and know He's talking to me too. You know, today in our Bible story, we have boats and waves and bikes and, well, we don't really have a bike. I mean, I just have bike on the brain. But we do have boats and waves. And we also have Jesus falling asleep. That's part of our story. In fact, instead of me telling you about it, let's just read it. Here in the book of Mark, in the New Testament, in chapter 4, verse 35, let's read about what happened in this storm and with this boat. That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat, there were also other boats with him. A, fame, a furious storm came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drowned? He got up, rebuked the wind and the waves, and said, Quiet, be still. The wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. You know, boys and girls, I want to show you a video, a little bit more about this story, but I want you to think about the storms in your lives. And it may not be on an ocean, it may not be on a lake, it may be something else going on in your life right now. Let's watch our video. It's time for a Bible story. A long time ago in the land of Israel, Jesus and his disciples spent the day doing what they loved to do most. Let me guess, making sandwiches. Nope, teaching. Jesus was talking to people and preaching the gospel all day long. When evening came, Jesus told his disciples to jump on a boat and cross the Sea of Galilee. All right, just a little evening cruise action, huh? Nice and peaceful trip across the lake. Nice, sounds pretty nice. Well, it started out that way, but shortly after they pushed off and started to travel across, something happened that wasn't so great. They were attacked by a giant sea monster. Ah! Run, swim for your lives. Uh, no, that's not what happened at all. First, the wind started to blow. Then the waves started to pick up and the rain began to pour, and pretty soon, their boat was in the middle of a huge storm. Ah, yikes. Well, it's okay. At least they're in like a huge, big old cruise ship, right? No big deal. Not quite. They didn't have boats like that back then. They were actually in a little wooden ship, like this. Whoa, that is not so big. That thing was out in the middle of the sea in a storm? Yeah, man. That sounds terrifying. I bet Jesus and the disciples were so scared. They were probably totally freaking out. Well, the disciples were pretty scared, but Jesus, not so much. In fact, Jesus was asleep during the whole storm. Seriously? How in the world could someone sleep at a time like this? Look, the boat's rocking all over the place, water's splashing everywhere, the wind and waves are going crazy. They're just on a little tiny boat, man. Game over, man, game over. Okay, okay, calm down. That is true, but Jesus wasn't afraid. He knew that his father God is a good father and that he would do anything to keep them safe because he loves them. Okay, so like what happened next? Well, the storm kept getting worse and worse and the disciples really started to freak out. They ran to Jesus and woke him up frantically worried about how he could be sleeping during this storm. Well, yeah, I mean, he is sleeping during a storm. Jesus got up and the disciples all watched with wide eyes to see what he would do as he calmly walked to the front of the boat. He raised his hands to the clouds and he commanded the storm to be still. Immediately, the wind stopped and the water was completely calm. Dude, that is awesome. He like totally canceled the whole storm. Just like that? That's amazing. I bet the disciples like couldn't believe their eyes. Actually, you're right. They were totally surprised that Jesus did that. 
But he asked them why they were surprised. Wait, hold on, what do you mean? He was surprised that they were surprised? I mean, there's a lot of surprise happening here. Well, yeah. Jesus knew that his father loved his children and that he is powerful enough to do anything for them. This is why Jesus wasn't afraid of anything while he was here on earth. He knew that his father loved him and would take care of him. Oh, gotcha. So that's why he wasn't afraid of the storm or like surprised that God came through for him? Exactly. He was able to teach the disciples a very important lesson. That two plus two is four. No. That yellow and blue make green. Uh, that's true, but no. That it's impossible to lick your own elbow. Oh, gross. Stop doing that. And no, it's much more important than that. Jesus was trying to get them to simply trust in God, their father, who loved them and would take care of them. When we know how much our father loves us, fear flies out the window. Ah, good point. That's a lot more important than math or colors or licking stuff. So after that, I bet they wouldn't have to be afraid of anything else that came their way, huh? Yeah, technically that would make sense. Like a giant sea monster attack! What? No, get that thing out of here. There aren't any sea monsters out there. Debatable, but I'm just saying if there were, we wouldn't have to be afraid of them, right? Okay, you got me there. Aha, a conundrum! Yeah, yeah, the end. What a great video, right? It's even funny because we know sea monsters don't exist. But in our lives, the challenges that we face can feel like sea monsters. They can feel very, very real. And I just want you to realize that sometimes, just like the disciples that were walking with Jesus, I mean, He was there in front of them. In this book that we just read out of Mark, Jesus had performed miracle after miracle. They had seen it with their own eyes, and yet, in that boat, they were still afraid, and they had to cry out to Him. And His question was, are you still afraid? Even though they'd seen Him. We haven't seen Jesus with our eyes, but He gives us His truth in this Bible, we can look at the mountains, we can look at the stars, we can look at the sun, we can look at each other and know that God is real and that He came as Jesus to this earth and lived as a human. And in His human form, Jesus did sleep. But I wanna tell you something, we don't have to worry that Jesus is asleep when we're crying out to Him. Although it may feel like it sometimes, if you're facing a big test or your friends are angry with you or maybe mom and dad are arguing or grandpa's sick, I don't know what it is for you. Maybe you're struggling with some kind of sin. You keep doing the same thing over and over and you pray and ask Jesus to help you and it feels like he's asleep. Well, he's not asleep now because the Bible tells us back in the Old Testament in the book of Psalm, it says, God does not slumber or sleep. He doesn't need to sleep. He's perfect. We can't even imagine that. We sleep because we need to reboot. We have to rest. God is never asleep. He knows your every need. Now, it might take a little longer than you want it to, but He will answer your prayer. And it may not be the answer you want, but you'll see why He answered the way He did one day. Boys and girls, that's why it's so important for us to be together, to share with your mom and dad or your grandma and grandpa, somebody else who loves Jesus, your challenges. So we can pray for one another and help each other through. You know, that reminds me, our Bible verse. For me, what really helps me when I'm challenged, like I said, is this book and my prayers to Jesus. Also my friends and family who love Jesus. But I wanna go right to our verse today and we're gonna read it together. Do you remember? We've learned it piece by piece by piece, but today it's the whole thing. Are you ready to say it with me? Let's say it together. 1 John 5, 5. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes Jesus is the Son of God. Let's say it again together. Let's read it all at once. Are you ready? Okay, I wanna hear you this time. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes Jesus is the Son of God. That's us. 
we can overcome the world. That's every challenge in the world, that sickness and sadness. It's all of those things that can cause us to be sad and upset. This very Bible says when we trust Jesus, we can overcome anything. God is with us. That's our memory verse and that's our promise. You know, I have um, a little object lesson I want to show you here. Because I think sometimes things are going on in our life and it's really easy to say, wow, yeah, I know. I know Jesus is real and I believe that God is real. But we forget or we get busy or we get angry and we push away from God because we know we're being, frankly, naughty. And so maybe we feel guilty. That's not God. what God wants us to do. He wants us to stay close to him. So for instance, here's my spare tire. This is called the rim, this metal piece. That's us. That's me and you. The outside, this tire, is kind of like our skin, our body. Sometimes it'll go flat. Sometimes we need to pump it up. You know, we're not always on board. But this, this is our skeleton, this rim. And you can see that this rim has spokes, right, that hold it together. And this is called the hub. This is what keeps the wheel going in the right direction. This is what holds the whole thing together. Without this hub, say this hub was over here, our wheel would go. <laughs> it wouldn't just roll like it's supposed to. Well, boys and girls, I want to tell you, Jesus is, should be our hub. He is the center of our life. When Jesus becomes the center of our life, everything we face can be handled. We might not like it, but he holds us together. These spokes could be like the things that keep us connected to Jesus, okay? Our family, prayer, reading our Bible, coming to church, serving others. There's all kinds of things in our life that can help us to stay connected to Jesus. One of those is being willing to trust Him. Trust Him when we've done something wrong and say, I'm so sorry, will you help me? Will you forgive me? And He does. That helps us to stay focused too. What happens, and, and if you're a bike rider, you know, if some of these spokes start breaking off, it doesn't work. Pretty soon, pretty soon, our tire starts to cave in. And I've had that happen, boys and girls, and it's a scary feeling because the surety of my tire underneath me starts to wobble, and it does this instead of this. That's what happens in our lives. When we don't keep talking to Jesus, when we stop maybe reading our Bibles, when we give up on coming to church, those things start to erode. Doesn't mean he's not here, it just means it's harder for us to be connected to him. And our prayer here at Kids Crossing is that each one of you would know Jesus as your very personal best friend, Savior and Lord, and that he will help put all those spokes together. When we trust him, he gives us his spirit to live inside of us. And then from there, we start to learn which spoke means what in our life, and He holds us together. Let's pray about that right now, shall we? Jesus, we just want to thank You, and we ask You to be the center of our life, just like this hub on this bicycle tire, that You would come into our hearts, that You would forgive us our sins, that you would show us your love and how smooth life can be when we trust you. And we know, Jesus, we'll still have bumps. There'll be bumps in the road. There'll be bumps in our lives. There'll be hurts. And there will be things that are hard. But you're the center of our life. We can trust you and we can trust that it will all get better in time. And that for eternity, we'll be with you, Jesus. We pray this and ask you this in your amazing name. Jesus, amen. Boys and girls, when you pray a prayer like that, he hears you and he gives you his spirit and he loves you and he will never leave you. And that's something really important for me today to remember that he is with me. He is for me. 
and he is going to help me with my bike race. I hope I'll see you next week and maybe I'll be coming by your house in just a minute. Be watching. Bye! You guys stomp your feet like that? Now let's clap together. That's it. so good. That's called clapping on the back feet. All right, sing this real quiet with me now. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Yes, even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.